Uh, to jump in, I'd like to start with Dr. Iqbal. Dr. Iqbal, can you please share what led you to become a primary care physician? And do you feel you made the right decision going into primary care? So thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Um, so my uh, first interaction with physicians was uh, when I was a child, I broke my arm when I was very, very young, five years old. And so I was taken to the hospitals a lot. And uh, I just really admired my primary care physician and um, just the, the whole process of it all of being so young, I had not been, um, uh, had not been um, uh, presented with uh, anything outside of my, my house and my school. So I really didn't know um, about medicine, about uh, opportunities that were available to me. Uh, I'm Pakistani and I was uh, very sheltered. I didn't have any mentors, uh, female or male, that I had went to college. And so it was really exciting to me to see um, uh, life outside of uh, just um, labor work and that type of thing. So as I grew up, I always focused back on um, uh, that injury that I had and in going into the hospital and um, seeing other professions. And so uh, growing up, that was always in the back of my mind. Um, so I was one of those people that I always wanted to be a doctor. That was the only thing I wanted to do. And so uh, then reality hits you, you know, when you go into undergrad and then you make other decisions and you have other opportunities in life. Um, I, I didn't get into medical school in the US uh, the first time around. Uh, so I applied to a school in the Caribbean. I went to St. George's in Grenada and started my career there and uh, transferred to New York Medical College um, in my third year in my clinical clerkship. So that I went um, kind of roundabout, but ended up where I was supposed to be. And um, I have no regrets. I know uh, I talked to some colleagues on days where we're, we're super busy or things um, are, we don't have time to spend with our families or we're just rushed. And um, I know colleagues say, well, you know, I should have been a specialist or I should have uh, made a different life career choice. Um, my, me personally, I've never um, felt that I'm exactly where I was supposed to be. I love my job. I love my career. Not to say that it isn't a lot of hard work. And some days I wish I could just call in sick and take the week off. But um, I'm absolutely, I have no regrets uh, of going into primary care. Indeed, uh, and well accomplished, uh, I may say. Thank you, Dr. Iqbal. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Pacheco, would you mind sharing with us uh, uh, what led you to become a primary care physician? And do you feel you made the right uh, choice in going into primary care? And thank you for having me as well. Uh, and this, is a, this is a real honor and a, and a pleasure to be a part of. Um, I have a little bit of a longer history uh, than you, Dr. Iqbal. I started my career in medicine. Um, well, I would say that I wanted to be a doctor too as a child. I mean, I think that's gonna be the common theme here, right? Um, but I became a nurse and um, that's what I did first. And I worked in oncology stem cell transplant in a very busy downtown uh, Manhattan hospital. Um, it was an incredible experience. I loved nursing uh, primarily because it's very patient focused and patient centered. And I feel like, you know, as I've become a doctor and I'll talk about that in a second, um, that a, has a little bit of a different focus. Um, fast forward, I went through 9-11 in a downtown Ground Zero hospital and it was life-changing. And um, I really knew then that I wanted to contribute more to medicine and be a little bit more in charge of the patient uh, treatment plan and the care. So I too went off to medical school. Um, I chose uh, to head into the Caribbean for, for those first two years and life was tough in St. Martin, um, but I made it. And uh, I did my third year of medical school in London, which was an incredible experience looking at socialized medicine and just all that that brings. Um, but really more importantly, um, really honing in on diagnostic skills versus relying on ancillary testing and um, came back and did my fourth year in New York again and decided I wanted to be a surgeon. So I went to surgery. I did a surgery residency for two years at University of Connecticut, and it was a really busy colorectal cancer program. Um, I got really well at putting, really good at putting lines in in the ICU because that's what you do your first two years of gen surge is you spend it in the ICU, getting really good at taking care of very sick patients. And when I woke up because I slept as much as I could, which was very little, I decided that what was I doing? And um, I was missing out on all the, the great things that is primary care, which in my opinion now 
is truly the foundation of medicine. Um, so I missed all the relationship building and I missed all of the discussions about social determinants of health. And I missed all that, um, all that, all those things that I get to do in addition to treating diabetes and hypertension and heart failure. And so I took a gap year in the middle of my life, my adult life, I regrouped and I decided to do primary care in an unopposed residency program in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. I'm from Manhattan. I like Chinese food at two o'clock in the morning and that was all done. And so um, I lived there. I became a Steelers fan. Um, I recruited into Geisinger and have spent the last eight years of my 20 plus year career in medicine in primary care. And um, it has been the best decision I could have ever done. Um, as you can see from my title, I have transitioned um, much of my practice into administration because at this point, I have a lot to offer, I feel, in terms of policy and procedure and just making this better, not only for patients, but for our providers in primary care and really honing in on quality because I know none of us went into this or none of you are going into this thinking I wanna do this you know, kind of just uh, a little bit, you wanna do it all the way. And quality is just that, it shows, it showcases your work. And um, the other part to this is that because um, I'm not no longer in the specialty world, I get to really be patient focused and patient centered. So it's not about necessarily my decision-making all the time, but really become, I become part of the team. So um, I have no regrets. I love it. I can't wait to continue um, and do more in primary care. Sure. Um, first of all, again, I want to extend my, uh, my, my thanks to, to you, Jeffrey, and sorry, Dr. Kakish, and, 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 and our, uh, our team at AMN for inviting me here today and to be able, allowed to present along with my esteemed colleagues. Uh, one common thread that it seems to be running across the three of us is that we all made it off, uh, <laughs> off, off an island somewhere. <laughs> and that, for those of you who are residents who are watching us today, I hope that that's inspirational and to know that you can go through sometimes a, a crooked line and then that may, that may be the best route for you because those experiences shape who you are and I'm so thankful for them. Um, similar to what Dr. Pacheco and Dr. Iqbal said, I, I didn't go straight into medical school from undergrad. Um, I actually, I have, no, I have no shame in saying it. I, I was probably a little overconfident uh, going in, uh, coming out of UCLA, I thought, you know, to that point, everything had worked out. I took all the right APs in high school. You know, I was in the right major in undergrad. Um, yeah, like a 35 on the MCAT. I was like, oh, someone's going to take me somewhere, right? And then, but to Dr. Pacheco's point, or to Dr. Iqbal's point, I didn't have a template. I didn't have someone that I could follow here in the United States. My parents are first-generation first immigrants from the Philippines. They don't know what medicine is like in, in, in here. And you'll find out that it, that's very much the case. Like, um, you know, uh, not having that... Well, was kind of a, a little bit of a hurdle to overcome. So that's fine. Um, I ended up uh, applying initially, didn't get in. So I said, okay, well, how can I improve my application? Well, I wanted some practical experience. So I ended up working as an EMT. Uh, I worked 911 in Inglewood, California. And uh, in 2005, that was when Hurricane Katrina um, uh, hit New Orleans and the Gulf Coast. And we were able to, to go over there. And we, I remember um, caravanning, like after the mayor of New Orleans was on CNN just saying like, we need help. And then my, my boss was like, you wanna go? I said, yep. And thankfully, it was at, at that point in my life when I could go. And, you know, I was there triaging patients, you know, to get heli helicoptered out of the out of the convention center when it and, and I was like, you know, this is rewarding. This is super like this is super helpful. But at the same time, I was frustrated by my lack of scope. I was like, what am I doing as EMT? I really need I really need to be in, med in medicine and uh, double down. I swallowed my pride. I said, let me go to the Caribbean and see what happens. <laughs> and thankfully, I was able to come back and. Um, and that's one of those things when actually when you're going through rotations in school in school and you're rotating on these U.S. hospitals, the attendings and the staff, the nurses, they will see it. They'll see if you're if you're sincere, if you're actually if you're caring for your patients. And I think that and for many of us who apply to med school, a lot of us put on our essays, oh, I want to serve the underserved, you know, <laughs> and I I'm thankful that I'm actually living that right now. And in, in terms of actualizing that dream, uh, working for a federally qualified health center. Um, I didn't even know that what that was until I finished residency, actually, until I started my position. Um, so to, to ask, answer the question about, you know, I'm happy going to primary care, I would have to say yes. I'm, I'm so very thankful to be where I am. Uh, the exercise of, you know, like what if in terms of for many family medicine doctors, 
part of what attracts us to it is because for some it's different aspects, right? Some people like the continuity, which is one of the reasons I, 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 I like primary care. Um, some people like the procedures. So if you're working on a, in a small clinic setting or, or even if you work in a, in a rural ER, you can, you can do some outpatient or ER work. So that kind of jack of all trades thing uh, as a family medicine physician, it definitely appeals to me. Um, so yeah, the what if exercise about like, you know, what if I could have been like ER or, or other specialties, that, that, that's not necessarily helpful for me because I'm that, that very much so at peace with where I am. And the deeper I look into trying to, uh, what's it called, um, really understand and, and, and impact, make as much impact as I can in my current role, the more uh, fulfilled I've become. Uh, for instance, right now I'm working at Ultimate, which has an Institutes for Health Equity, um, which is very much in vogue right now in terms of addressing health and healthcare disparities. And I feel like I'm so proud to be working for an organization that started 50 years ago as East LA Free Barrio Clinic. So um, I feel like you know we're not new to the game in terms of trying to address these uh, these healthcare disparities. So. Um, again, uh, I, I love being able to come to work. I'm not going to lie to you that yes, there are long days, like just like Dr. Eichel and Dr. Pacheco said, where you just don't want to get up in the morning. But then at the same time, you remember that you became a doctor because you wanted to serve, not because you wanted people to serve you. So I, I think that's one of the things that keeps me uh, going. Thank you again, uh, all three of you, for your, your leadership and experience in uh, the front line of medicine and primary care.